So there are many ways to suffer that are not all tra that it's not all trauma related when someone is suffering. But I think that other forms of suffering maybe we understand better or we know how to show up better. Like you think about when someone dies, the community knows about it. The community shows up for it. The community contributes food and contributes care and there's these understood ways of marking that. But usually the things that are are in the realm of trauma experiences, those are not things that we easily share with other people, partly because it can be triggering for us to talk about it, right? If someone is experiencing abuse, they don't want to like talk about that everywhere or if they have experienced it. There isn't there isn't a way for community to gather around and mark it. And that's that's why I think it is often the most, that's why I would say um, untreated and ignored and avoided, right? We don't know how to mark things that cause this level of trauma for people. So trauma is less understood and it is less supported. And we are so prone to focus on behavior modifications when we're seeing the different responses of trauma instead of sourcing the trauma that might lie underneath it. That's really common with addiction treatment. Um, we see the addiction, and of course we want the addictive behavior to stop. But sometimes we're failing to consider that it's like there's a pain. There's a pain for, that's bringing that behavior around. And, and I hope we're getting better at learning about what that pain is and caring about that too. But there are other reasons, I think, too, that we might tend to ignore or avoid or belittle and misunderstand trauma. Um, one of it is that there, it's complicated. There's a lot to understand about trauma um, and, so, and how it affects the body. And I think some of us, we just prefer to think about these behaviors more in a spiritual lens. It's simpler for us. Bad behavior well, okay, so we decide what to do about your behavior. But to start to understand um, trauma in the body does take time, and it will take education. We prefer staying in a spiritual lens for our humanity than, than also including a physical one. We might be uncomfortable thinking about how our brain and body can inform our understanding of emotional health. It just feels too complicated or too dangerous. And so we avoid that. But I think another thing is that it's easy to lose hope when we're walking with someone who is experiencing trauma because we pray for them and they still feel the trauma and we, we speak truth to them and their body is still experiencing the trauma. So the things that we're used to bringing comfort to ourselves don't always stop the responses that someone in trauma is having. And so we... If we don't understand what's happening, we think that's all we have to offer and we can lose hope. And that's the one thing they really need us not to do. People who are experiencing trauma in their bodies and in their minds, they really need people who hold hope for them and who stay with them in that process. So when we're out of our known resources for helping, we easily lose hope for them, and even worse, we can start to blame them. We can start to say things like, well, you're just not, you're not trying hard enough, or you, you need to do more of this or more of that. And then that is re-traumatizing for that person because it's added shame. So yes, I think we do avoid, and we do ignore, and we do belittle, and we do un misunderstand. And sometimes we add suffering. Shouldn't be this way. No, but learning about it helps. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. That's why I come back to. I think if we understood it more, we would live. We would live better. Mm -hmm.